Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. We want to welcome you to another Freedom Moment. It's Sunday, July 5th, 2020. Hey, it's 4th of July weekend, everyone. And this is the first Sunday that we're actually live service at Roxbury Community Church. So we just want to give a shout out to all the people in Breezy Point and Roxbury Community Church. All of the blessings to the host of congregation and Freedom Fellowship. We just want to thank God for you. Let's open up with prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you and bless you and praise you on this beautiful weekend, Lord. We thank you, Father, that we have a risen Savior. We thank you, Lord God, for strength to carry out your will. Father, we thank you for an indwelling Holy Spirit. Lord, as we come into your presence, we ask you to forgive us, wash us, and cleanse us. Father, so that we can be ready to serve you like never before. Father, we thank you once again for what your Holy Spirit is going to teach us in this service. At this time, Father, have your way in Jesus' name. Everyone in agreement said, Amen. Looking for fellowship, prayer, Bible study? You can get in touch with us at home or on the go. Just go to www.freedomfellowshiprb.org or you can catch us on Twitter at Freedom Rockaway. Scripture lesson for this morning is taken from the Gospel according to St. Matthew. Matthew chapter 25. We're reading it from the New International Version. Matthew chapter 25, beginning at verse 14. Listen to what it says. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one, he gave five bags of gold, to another, two bags, and to another, one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Well, then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers, so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has ten bags. For whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his holy word.
text of today's message is taken from the Gospel according to St. Luke. Luke's Gospel, the 12th chapter. Luke chapter 12, we're taking one verse for our text. Verse 37. Listen to what Luke 12, 37 says. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you and bless you and praise you. Lord, we thank you for what you're about to teach us. We thank you ahead of time for preparing a table before us. Holy Spirit, speak to us individually. Cause us to grow. Cause us to change from the inside out so that we can truly be salt and light in this generation. Father, we thank you. Send down your anointing. It makes teaching easy, makes understanding even easier. Father, we'll give you all the glory. We'll give you all the praise. It's in Jesus' name we ask. Everyone in agreement said, Amen. It's good, he said, for those servants whose master finds them watching. Amen. It's good if the master comes back and finds you watching. Listen, and it's interesting because in the Greek, it doesn't just say watching with the eye. Not just looking out, but ready to serve the master. It's a good thing if the master finds you not just looking out the door, but ready to serve them. Listen to what he said. It's good for those servants. And by the way, the adverse would have to be true then too. It's bad for those servants whose master does not find them watching when he comes back. Not ready to serve. Amen. The adverse is true. It's good for those who are watching and ready. It's bad for those servants who are not watching and who are not ready. Need a title for today's message. Welcome to church service. Amen. Welcome to church service. Again, this is the first week in live fellowship that we get an opportunity. So we want to ask you a couple of questions. When you're thinking about church service, let's dive right in. Here's my first question for you. Again, it's just something to ponder, servants. Are you looking forward to serving? Amen. Are you looking forward to serving? Well, Pastor, that's obvious. I wouldn't be in church. Well, the text, read the text. The text is addressed to servants. I'll say that again. The text that we're utilizing for today's message is addressed to the servants, not to church attendees. Whoa. Amen. This is something spoken to the servants, not just to those who attend church. Servants, servants, not just attendees. Hey, listen. Don't just pat yourself on the back because you made it to church service. Are you ready to serve in the church? That's the question. Not just an attendee. Oh, I go to a church that has so many members, so many people attend. And this message and this text is not for just attendees. It's for those who are ready to serve. Those servants, by the way, and you can check it out yourself. According to the scripture, hell has more attendees than heaven. Don't pat yourself on the back because you're an attendee. Don't pat yourself on the back because you're in a big crowd of people. Consider yourself blessed if you're a servant. Why? Because hell has more attendees than heaven. Hey, listen, don't take my word for it. Jesus' words speak even louder. He said, enter in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. 
Straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leads to life and few there be that find it. Amen. This is not for attendees. This is for servants. By the way, you remember John's Gospel, chapter 6. It says that 5,000 attendees showed up for lunch that day. Jesus fed 5,000 people, 5,000 attendees. And get this, only one little boy served lunch. Go back and read it yourself. Go back to John 6. One little boy served lunch. Only one servant out of 5,000 people. Oh, well, you know, I mean, isn't this about the church? Isn't this about the, the, the church, pastor? Yeah, yeah, it's about the church. The church is a body. Hello? The church is not an organization. It's an organism. The church, the body of Christ. And, and by the way, here's something you need to know, attendees. A body doesn't have visiting parts and limbs that come and go. <laughs> Amen. There's people that walk in and out of church. They're in one meeting and they're out of a meeting. They're in one group. They're out of a group. They're in one Bible study. They're out of a Bible study. Hey, listen, that's great. Uh, again, that's where it all starts, where you start learning, where you start developing fellowship. I understand that. But now you're called to serve. The second you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, he wants you to serve. He wants you to be ready to serve. Remember, a body, if we're the body of Christ, a body doesn't have visiting parts and limbs that come and go. Could you imagine if you did, your foot just was here one minute and it's gone the next? Yeah, that's how church attendees are. There's some people, I, I haven't seen them in a year. And then there's some folks that come back, oh, pastor, you know, I had this going on, that going on. I couldn't make it to church service. Oh, that's okay. Were well, you still serving Christ? Remember, the majority of serving happens when you're outside of the church building. Amen. Yeah, that's where you're preaching. It's, it's, it's on that bank line. It's on that food line. It's, it's in, in your job. It's, it's in your home with your family, amongst your loved ones. It's dealing with your enemies. Are you a servant? Are you looking forward to serving? Because I'll tell you something truthful, and you should know this. Good service, it comes from good preparation. Amen. Good service comes from good preparation. On your mark, get set. That means you're ready. Praise the Lord. Are you preparing a meal for somebody? Well, you know that if there's no preparation, there's really no meal. Oh, come on, pastor. What are you trying to say? Good service comes from good preparation. Oh, well, I want to be prepared. Yeah, I want to be prepared to serve. And and that's why I'm I'm listening to this message, pastor. Well, okay. Well, here. Good preparation comes from a good attitude. Amen. The people that are well prepared are the people that have a good attitude. Just look at your scripture lesson. Look at your scripture lesson. The Bible said one had five, the other had two, the other had one. The one that had five, the ones that had five and two bags of gold, right? They had a great attitude. Yo, I'm going out. I'm going to take this five that I have and I'm going to serve with it. I'm going to take this two that I have and I'm going to serve. Look what I got. Look what I got back. Master, look at this here. They were prepared. They had a great attitude. Look at the one with the one. Look at his attitude and why he wasn't a good servant. Why the, 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 the master called him a wicked and lazy servant because he said, hey, here's yours right back at you. Here's what you gave me. Yeah, here you go. It's right back at you. I buried it so you could have it back. That, my friends, is a bad attitude for service. Show me somebody that wants to serve. Again, you want to serve a good meal? Preparation. Huh? 5,000 people showed up for lunch to Jesus. 5,000. Only one came with lunch. Go back and read it. Only one came with lunch. 
One was prepared. It was a little boy and he had five loaves and two fishes. He had a little boy's lunch. Five pieces of bread and two fishes. He was ready for lunch. The other people weren't even ready for lunch. They showed up. And then they had their mouths open, ready for food. Good preparation comes from a good attitude. Amen. Remember last week we talked about freedom. And, and, and freedom is really, one of the things about freedom, it's choice. Remember we were talking about that? Freedom is really the ability to make choices. And those choices are limited, right? Well, if you think about it, put on your spiritual thinking caps. Here's your choices in this scenario. You're either in charge or you're in service. Hallelujah. I'll say it again. You're either in charge, you're either the boss, or you're in service, you're the servant. Those are your choices. If you are not in charge and you're not serving, then you, my friend, are homeless and unemployed. Amen. The people that are homeless and unemployed are people that are not in charge and they're not in a position to serve. I think half of the individuals that we can help if we just get them working, if we just help them to serve, if we just l allow them to prepare. Okay, a lot of individuals are in a rut because they're not capable of being in a service industry and serving individuals. Let's help people get back on their feet by becoming servants. Amen. Listen, if you're in charge, you're in charge. But if you're not in charge, your only other choice is to be in service. Glory to God. The Bible said that Jesus, uh, 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 the master in, in our scripture lesson and in our text, it said something very powerful. It says he went to a wedding. If you go and you read that, that scripture, he went to a wedding. Blessed are those uh, uh, servants who when their master returns from the wedding. And now what, what's the significance of a wedding in this scenario? Well, the Lord is coming back after witnessing others entering into a covenant. God is a covenant keeping God. That's what you need to know. So God is out watching other people getting into a covenant. See, covenants, that's what agreements are, covenants. So that's what a wedding is. That's the significance. So God, the master is out checking out covenants and blessing covenants and witnessing covenants. And so he's coming back after he gets, after he sees many individuals come into a covenant relationship with him, he's coming back. Blessed are those servants who, when the master comes back from the wedding, finds them. By the way, a wedding doesn't last forever. <laughs> if you've ever been to a wedding, it doesn't last forever, okay? Uh, you go to the wedding, the people say, I do. They make a commitment. You have a bash. You're back home again. It's amazing. It's, it's, sometimes it's downright depressing because you, if, you, if you've ever gone through a wedding, you, you go for a year, two years in all the preparation, all the preparation, all the preparation, all the preparation, and then the wedding lasts four hours. And you're like, wow, where did all that, where did all that go? I'm telling you that God is off preparing covenants with other people. He's on his way back. No wedding lasts forever. He's given us a heads up, folks. He's given us a heads up. Look at Luke chapter 12. Let's go right to our text. Let's go right to the text so you can see when we pull it out. Verses 35 through 37, okay? 37 was our text. Be dressed, ready for service. Keep your lamps burning. Look what he says. Like servants waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It'll be good for those servants whose master finds them watching. There's our scripture when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will dress himself to serve, will have them recline at the table and will come and wait on them. Will you be ready? Will you be ready? That's the question. So here's the next question. Uh, how many knocks? <laughs> 
How many times will he have to knock before you open up? Wow, Pastor, that's getting deep now. I, I, again, we're talking about your level of service. You're supposed to be waiting in such a way that, I mean, his knocks shouldn't be many. I'll tell you something. I'm watching and watching and watching. I don't think he'll get a chance to knock. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull the door open before he can even get a chance to hit it. Amen. I'm the kind of servant I want to I wanna be so excited and so ready that, that upon my Lord's return, I open up immediately. Look, the Lord doesn't just barge in. He knocks. I'll say that again. The Lord doesn't just barge in. He's not just barging into your space. He knocks. Behold, Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears and opens, I'll enter in and eat with him and he with me. Opens immediately. That was our text. If that, if that servant is really waiting, they're going to open immediately. Well, what are you trying to say, Pastor? Your concentration should be on the Lord's return. Well, I'm in church. There's so many people in church and they're not even looking up to see if God's even coming back. And again, religiosity, that's not his call. Faith is his call. Obedience is his call. Repentance is his call. He didn't say, blessed are the religious. He said, blessed are those faithful people who when the master knocks, they open immediately. Here's your takeaway point. Let's get your takeaway point. The only thing we should be interested in hearing at the end of time is well done, good and faithful servant. Praise God. That's the only thing I want to hear. Go right back to your uh, scripture lesson from this morning in, in, in Matthew chapter 25. The only thing I want to hear him say at the end of time is, Bill, well done, good and faithful servant. Well, pastor, so then how do I become a, a, an, an effective servant? I want to be an effective servant. How do I do that? Well, we're going to give you some things. How to function as an effective servant. We're going to leave you with four points to remember. Just four quick points, okay? Four points to remember. And it'll make you an effective servant if you remember these four points. You ready? Point number one, I want you to know this. Being an effective servant is really a function of being a branch. Oh, what do you mean? It's a branch function. That's what being an effective servant is. It's Christ in you. Listen to what Jesus said in John chapter 15 and verse 5. This is Jesus speaking. To the servants, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me, abide in him, and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Watch this. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Remember this and you won't bug out. You'll be an effective servant if you realize that as long as you tap into Christ, you're going to function as a fruitful servant, you're going to blossom. You're going to give fruit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, kindness. All the fruits of the Spirit are going to come through you, and you will be an effective servant. Tapped into Him. How do you do it? How do you do it? By the Holy Spirit. How does He dwell in you? By His Holy Spirit. Okay? You're going to, func you're going to function as an effective servant if you remember that you're a branch and you tap in to the vine. What else? Point number two. Being an effective servant, you got to remember that it's also a body function involved. Amen. The church, we went over this uh, a few moments ago. The church is a body. It's the body of Christ. Hello? It's the body of Christ. If you remember that not only are you a branch, you're a member of the body of Christ. 
So, so, so pastor, how does that make me an effective servant? Look at Colossians chapter one and verse 18. Paul gives us uh, th this, uh, this hint. He says, and he, Jesus, is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. He is the head of the body. Oh, man. In becoming an effective servant, watch this. Not only are you a branch and he's the vine, but you're one of the limbs. You're one of the parts. We were talking about body parts. And he, he, he alone is the head. Hallelujah. Pa pastor Bill is not the head. Your pastor, your apostle is not the head of the church. Jesus Christ is the head of the church. The church is the body of Christ. What, what do you mean? Watch this. His word and his thoughts. His word and his thoughts are his directions coming from the head. I hope you're getting this. How to function as an effective servant? Remember that it's a branch function. Remember that it's a body function. And remember this. Point number three. You'll be an effective servant if you realize that the servants get benefits. <laughs> Hallelujah. Woo! Amen. Amen. The servants get benefits. That should drive you to being a servant. Pastor, what are you trying to say? Remember our scripture. We just read Luke 12, 35 through 37. Remember the scripture. The sooner you open, the sooner he sets a table and you get served. He's going to come back. If you open immediately, he's going to come in. He's going to let you get all dressed up. Watch this. And he is going to serve you. Hallelujah. There are benefits to being a servant. Psalm 23. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. It's him preparing the table for you, servant, for you. Get excited about being a servant. Remember your attitude. Remember Joseph? A couple of weeks ago, we talked about Joseph. He was a servant, right? Joseph in, in, in Genesis, he was the fixer-upper servant. He was able to fix up in the middle of a, a famine. He helped Egypt get on its feet. And then because he was such a good servant, everywhere he went, he was in prison, he was a great servant. Huh? He, was, he was a slave, he was a great servant. And because he was a servant, looking out for God's will, he was put in charge of Egypt. Go back in, in, in John's gospel and, and read about the first miracle that Jesus performed. It's in a wedding. Hello, a wedding. He turned water into wine at Cana. And I'll tell you something. When you go and you read the story, you'll see something very, very powerful. Go back and read it yourself in John's gospel. The, the miracle of, of the water to wine at the, 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 the wedding in Cana. It says that the servants got an opportunity to see the miracle first. They got the first look at the water turning into wine. Let's get your last function. The last function of being an effective servant. Love. Love makes you want to serve. Amen. Let, let me say this to you. Love will make you serve without getting tired. Without getting tired. Genesis chapter 29 is the story of Jacob. And he's, he's working for Rachel. And, and, and Laban said, if you work seven years for me, then you can have my daughter. So Jacob, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 29, verse 20, Jacob served seven years to get Rachel but they seemed like only a few days to him because of the love he had for her. You won't get tired if you have love. Remember the scripture lesson, the servant, remember the servant who had the one bag of gold? It's clear that he wasn't in love with his master. It's clear he wasn't in love. He said, hey, you're the kind of guy that reaps where you didn't sow. You're the kind of guy that gets benefits who didn't really do anything for it. And he had a bad attitude and he did not love his master. 
The servant was not in love, and so he didn't serve well. The key to serving effectively and being an effective servant is love. Look at the scripture, John chapter 13. Jesus gives us his final dissertation on it. Right before the crucifixion, last supper, a new commandment I give you. Love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. What does that mean, Pastor? It means that you have the opportunity to serve in love. That's how Christ served us. He served us out of love. You can do it, friends. He hasn't called us to be attendees. He's just called us to be great servants. My friends, do you need the peace of God, the comfort of the Holy Spirit, the salvation of God through Christ Jesus? I challenge you to humble yourself before him now in the privacy of your home and talk to him. Ask him for forgiveness of your sins and invite him to be in charge of your life through the Lord Jesus. Trust him because he sees, he hears, and he'll respond to your honest prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you and bless you. We thank you for another opportunity to hear from you. Work through us. Abide in us so that we can function, not only as a branch, but a body, as servants of love. Go with us this week, protecting us on every side, Father, as we reopen the church for fellowship. We thank you for what you're doing, Lord. In Jesus' name, everyone in agreement said, amen. Remember John 8, 36. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed.